I don't know how philosophical or interesting I'm going to sound, but here goes. What does journaling have to do with life? Well, for me, it distracts me and it keeps me going on a more positive path. So yesterday I learned that I have, not to my surprise, but high cholesterol, really high cholesterol, I was told. Okay, so what is my solution? Whenever I do journaling, or whenever I do anything, I always have, a, have to have a reason for doing it. I guess that's just me. So I decided I was going to make a journal for keeping track of my food intake and then, you know, see if what I'm eating will lower my cholesterol. So that's what this journal is about today. So we're going to start with some packaging, as you can see. This is going to be my cover. Well, apparently my cholesterol doesn't agree with me. Well, let's just stay positive. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do something like a traveler's journal. I really don't know how to, um, I have to look at some more videos to do that. And I don't have the elastic. So my goal is to not go to the store because when I go to the store, as I said before, I can't be trusted. I go in for apples and I come out with pears, oranges, grapes, you know, whatever is on sale. That's what I do. Eat. Well, that'll work because then when I cut my papers, I won't lose a lot of papers. Now, I'm not going to use my trimmer for this because it'll dull the blade really quick as if it's not dull already. So I'm going to try to just do this. Yeah, just eyeball it. There. This is my special journal. Now, I mean, I think it's kind of a good idea. What do you think? People make journals every day for different reasons. Why not make one for yourself that will help you? Maybe you have the same problem. I'm hoping I'm going to be successful with staying on this diet of healthiness. Now, I'm not doing a diet for uh, because I want to lose weight. I want to do it because I really need to get healthy. So this is ten and a half wide, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this down because otherwise I'll be measuring it a million times. And I want it to be, the pages to be inside the journal, so I'm going to take off a half and a half. Do I want to do a whole half? Let me look. So, nine inches wide by how tall? How tall did I make it? Eight, so we're going to call that seven and a half inches tall. And while I'm sitting here, I'm going to drink my black tea that has a little bit of monk fruit in it. You know it's not bad. You want to hear the bad part? I'm used to drinking. I was on a keto diet for a while. All right, let me think. Is this going to be the wide? Seven and a half inches. All right, seven and a half inches tall. See, this is, I got to keep looking at that. Although I shouldn't have to because I already measured it. I was on the keto diet and I did pretty well. I was losing weight and actually lost my sugar craving. And then I got the most vicious cramps I've ever had when I stretched my legs, Charlie horses came in like a flood. So after trying everything, buying all the supplements, drinking the water, doing all the things I was supposed to do, I came to a conclusion that 
that's what the problem was, was the keto diet somewhere, and I couldn't figure out where. So I had to can the idea. All right, nine inches wide. So I knew that it was something, whatever I was doing, had to do with the keto diet. And try as I may, did not figure out what that problem was, so I lost my momentum and in the meantime I developed these habits of having heavy cream in my tea, having um, a lot of red meat, and mostly having heavy cream. I just love heavy cream anyways. So now I have to take myself off of heavy cream. Yeah, because now I'm going to have to either drink my tea black or I'm going to have to drink it with... Um, I, this morning I did try a splash of, just a little splash of heavy cream and then some almond milk. And I, I bought some salmon last night, which I don't even really like, but I have to say, I did put lemon, olive oil, garlic salt, pepper, of course, you know, hot sauce. That's like putting a volcano in my stomach. And how people can handle that, oof, can't handle it. All right, so nine inches wide. How do I want this to go? It's gonna have to go sideways. This is a, you know, rambling video. I've seen many of them. I guess if you enjoy watching videos where people talk and work, then you'll enjoy this one. If not, maybe you'd like to watch one of my other ones where I don't talk about things as much. But if you'd like to visit and stay a while, grab a cup of tea and let's get this journal that's going to be my journal of oh do I want to call it journal of life no I don't want to get that drastic just it's going to be my document journal where I document although look at me as I talk and I cut I mess up so now I can't even go nine inches Okay, so I'll have to be careful with this, but I can still use that because it'll just be a little smaller, that's all. Because I've already picked out my papers and I'm not going to be doing a lot of embellishing and things like that that I normally would focus on. Seven and a half inches tall. I know somebody's maybe watching and looking at me going, what are you doing? Doing my best, people. Just doing my best. I mean, cutting-wise. You know? Just trying to do it right. Well, it's starting to snow, so it should be a fun day, right? It really should be. It's just... Some days are hard to keep yourself motivated. And... For my own reasons... Apparently I can't cut and talk at the same time. Seven and a half inches tall. I want this to be the tall part. I heard somebody say, yeah, you finally got it, girl. In some of the papers, I like to fold this way. So this will be a fun way to keep track of my diet I was gonna I was thinking okay let me go find a notebook which I'm also always in the process of cleaning but never getting it the way I want it um, so I know where a couple of notebooks are and I think I just messed up again oh my goodness seven and a half inches tall oh no I did it I should keep this as my template, you know? That's the smart thing to do. Because I'm a visual person, so just visualize and look and see, right? 
I got these papers from all over the place. All right, so this side, all, I have a lot of uh, scrapbook albums. And I did buy a bunch of digitals, but I'm still working on how to print them off on really good paper. The paper that I've recently picked up did not appear to be any different than the paper that you get from Walmart. And I've already outdid myself in the pro, uh, budget department. I've outdone myself. Isn't that the cutest thing? That is Peter Rabbit's house. Just look at that. I don't know about you, but when I see Peter Rabbit stuff, I just love it. Minute so I can see what I'm doing wrong. Crafter, creator type. We always have to add something extra. I got this book. And I'm going to do a flip out. I think that's what it's called. So we'll go right to the center here. make the crease. I could have done it a different way, but that's how I chose to do it. And I'm going to put this. This is my... That's going to be my complimentary page. That's a flip, right? How about this? This is a flip. And then this way. I mean, it's nothing crazy, crazy complicated, and I find it a little interesting. I'm going to continue to add these pages and get some. You know what I like to do? I like to do this. I like to fold them. The opposite way so that way they complement each other. So when I get this next to this, you want every you don't want every single page having just white space because you could just have a notebook and be done with it. You want to add some color and interest, right? See, like this blue. These little blue bunnies are going to look fun next to that blue graphic paper, right? Doing pretty good, liking what I see. Okay, I think I've got enough papers in here. I just keep adding more things and I need to stop. So now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine because I love how stitches bring something to the journal and appeal to the eye. So I'm going to sew in a couple of pockets. And I won't bring you over to that because some people don't sew and some people may not want to hear the sound of the sewing machine, though I personally love the sound of the sewing machine. So I have all of my pictures, papers, sewn the way that I want to on my sewing machines. So my next step is going to be to make my cover. I've stuffed them also with a few little um, pieces of uh, journaling notes and cards so that way they'll be interesting to open up the journal and journal in it. So I've got to get this made because I've already had a, my lunch. Now I'm on my water. I have to drink lemon water. That if I write it down, it's almost like when you write something, you're more accountable. And I'm just being accountable to myself. So I'm going to use these very nice scissors from Tim Holtz. And let me think before I cut. So in that case, I'm going to give myself a little extra. And I have this really beautiful 
1960s fabric that I've been waiting for the right thing. I was going to make a pillow with it. And then I didn't. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to use this selvage, which is the edge of this. In case you're not a sewer, it's just the edge where it's finished as my guide. And then I can get this out of my way. See what I'm doing here. Fold this in like this. And then use my clips. Do I want to fold these all in and get this all in? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold these all in and then get a get my sewing machine out. See how I did that? And then just clip it down. And then bring this over here and give it a little bit of, I want to get a little bit of uh, give there. I don't want it too tight, tight. And then another corner and so forth. So now I've got two more corners to go and clip this down. And now so that I don't have to fight with my clips, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and do a straight stitch all the way around. So now I've sewed this down. Looks good. Now I'm going to get over here and I'm going to use this guide, this sewing as my guide. First, let's get the paper cut. All right, so I'll just get in here and just mark this. And this is, I'm going to call it, this is the right side. So that way when I go to put it back on, I have to make sure that I leave enough paper out so that when I sew, I catch the paper. So I'm looking at my line, my sewing line. So it looks like it's coming up to seven and a half inches, so that's pretty good. All right. Okay. That looks like it might work. Let's just try it out. See, when I put that up against the line like that, and I put it over here, I still have a little bit to go. And I can round the corners to make it a little better. And that makes a round corner. It'll still work out. While I was making the mermaid journal, which I just finished and loaded yesterday, I almost stopped making it because it was coming out different than what I had imagined and I didn't like where it was going. But what I learned, besides finish strong, was that you have to trust that the process is good. I still have some leftover uh, ink on my fingers. Sometimes in the middle it looks a little crazy. But if you keep going with it, you'll it'll come out fine. I think what I'm going to do, instead of doing a zigzag, is just keep doing a straight stitch. Because I don't even mind if there's two of them there. Off to the sewing machine. So my battery ran out on my camera. So while that's charging, I will try to use my phone and hopefully it'll come out wonderful. So I'm all done sewing, and it, you know, it's a little, it's a double-sided, not double-sided, but double-stitch, but it's not a typical double-stitch because it, um, 
you know, they're not evenly spaced, but it doesn't matter because I like it. And I want to use this journal. I don't want to fuss with it all day. So now let's see if I can stay in focus and get the next step done. Thank you. So let's try this out and see if this fits. Yes, it does. It does. Next step, binding. So I'm going to make sure I have all the pages the way that I want them. Make sure there's no last minute changes I want to do. going to work out great. Now I'm going to make sure this comes up here. That's what I call it, like my binding tools, my thread and my needle and my start sewing. Then I have an extra hand. Okay, let's go get the binding stuff. Now I've chosen these beads and these buttons because I'm going to decorate the ends of the binding thread with those. So I'll give myself a little room. So one, two, and a little bit extra. Get this threaded. I'll use my awl. And I'm going to come down, let's see, here, one, that's an inch, that's an inch. This is about the middle. So I'm going to go through everything. All the way to the other side with the cover. Did something. Banged up against my fingers. Okay, let's see. All right, we're just going to go get this done, go through the center, turn it over, go to the bottom, go back to the center again, some extra because that's going to be where I'm going to tie that off and then make sure I don't split the thread which I can feel it and I haven't and then back up to the top and here we go now if you go and you watch my first video you'll see that it took me forever to do binding. So it's true that practice makes perfect. I don't say that I'm perfect, but I say it's a lot more fun now. And there we go. We're just gonna tie this. We have a nice binding. And now we're gonna just do a really simple decoration for the buttons using the buttons not for the buttons and I'm gonna want I think I'm gonna want that to go inside so I'll keep that up there and I'll tie a little knot here we go And then we'll accent that green with this pretty bead. And I think I should have tied a knot first, but well, it's just going to slide back and forth, that's all. Because the more you fool around with the thread, 
or it's not really thread, binding, binding thread, I guess it's called, the more frayed it will get. All right, so learn from my mistake. Make the knot first. It's just a little stopper. And you know, I'm looking over at my desk and something fell off to the side here and it's a stopper. So I'm thinking, why not use it? Yeah, why not use it? Go through here. Well, let's see how it's getting frayed now. For the most part, I like to just make it be different. And there we go. That's different, right? I was thinking as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about a couple of charms that I have in my drawer, but I don't want to make a big production. I just want to make a little production and get this all done. And now the binding and the jewels are done, which looks a little crooked. What I'm going to do is glue it to the back of a piece of cardboard and then take that and put that on my journal cover. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take a picture. I want to finish your video and show you what I have inside and what I've chosen for all of my embellishments. Some ribbons and some pretty stitching. And again, I'm going to be using this so that I can document what I'm eating and what my weight is because I have to go to the doctors in two months. My cholesterol was too high and now I need to change my diet. I've already had salmon and a salad and I'm going to just really try hard to try to get it down without having to take medication. How about these two together, huh? Pretty. And see again how that sewing on the sewing machine just adds that special touch. Some ribbon, some, not, some trim here. And this is a nice little page out of a magazine that I purchased. And I, I put some pockets here and there just for fun, just because I might want to um, add something and I want it to be fun. That's the whole purpose. You're going to use it, you need it to be fun, right? This is pretty. I love this little, little bunny, little bunny heart. And Mr. Peter Rabbit's house, Mrs. Rabbit's house, I love this. I just want to sit there and have a cup of tea with them. Yep, just have fun. Try not to think about the things that I can't eat. I'm going to think about the things that I can. And, you know, there are some people that have issues with getting food so I need to be focused on the positive and see this pretty ruching that's what the term is in sewing a little button just made me think of the buttons that Peter Rabbit loses now this isn't really a Peter Rabbit book but I picked things that I really love that make me um, want to pick up this journal and journal in it. I have to think about exercise. Right now the snow is coming down pretty heavy. These are my favorite days. So that's about a quarter so I'm hoping that I'm going to write in there about how, how I have now conquered the sugar sugar problem where there's not a problem I don't need to have the sugar oh that's a real problem but it's got to be dealt with okay some more pretty the meaning of thrift I thought that was cool just 
leave it there and I'll read it when I get to that page. And some sewing. You know, I, I should have flipped that paper over, but I was thinking it was pretty poking through the vellum. But now I kind of wish that I had, you know, put the, pa the illustrations forward. These look pretty good, huh? Yeah, I did quite a bit of sewing there. And here's my little flip. Now, what have I, it's three o'clock. I think I started this around 11. So, because I was gonna stop and do some, you know, get a notebook out and start documenting. And I said, no, I want it to be pretty. Some coffee dyed paper with some more stitching. Just about every page I stitched because I just love that look. It's a lot of time, but it's definitely worth it. Do you think it's worth it? I mean, look, it just adds just a special touch. And this is just my moving the sewing machine around and creating different pattern. That was just sitting next to me on my desk and I said, I think I'm just gonna sew that in. And put a little pocket in there. Here's some more of that ruching. And this is the blanket stitch. Those colors to me just feel so happy and pretty. And the same thing with these um, feed sack papers. They're just, they just speak to me. I don't know why. It must have been something when I was younger. But they just do. Now we're almost to the end. I did this little jumpy stitch. And that is the end. So not bad, right? Um, for a closure, I think I'm just going to end up with just a simple one of these. You know, I don't want to fuss with it anymore. I just want it to be usable because that was my goal, to finish it today and start using it. So I'm going to turn the camera off, load this film up, and then start writing in this. So. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one.